The book of 2 Peter, chapter 3. The second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you, in both which I stir up you pure minds by way of remembrance, that ye may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets, and of the commandment of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior. Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers, walking after their own lusts, and saying, Where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. For this they willingly are ignorant of, that by the word of God the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of the water and in the water, whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water perished. But the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word, are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. But, beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years are as one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men concern slackness, but is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with the great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also, and the works that are therein, shall be burned up. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? Looking for and hastening unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heaven and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, be diligent that ye may be found of him in peace, without spot and blameless, and account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul also, according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you. As also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood, which they are unlearned and unstable rest, as they do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction. Ye therefore, beloved, seeing ye know these things before, beware lest ye also, being led away with error, the error of the wicked, fall from your own steadfastness. But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forever. Amen. Amen. First Peter, uh, the book of Second Peter, uh, rather, chapter three. Encouragement along the way, and welcome back. This is a conversation about God's word, and that is what encouragement along the way is. It's just simply uh, conversations, meditations, reflections, contemplations on. An entire life long of following the Lord, or at least, at the very least, knowing that God loves me. You see, I, I was blessed to uh, be brought up in the church, um, and have always had the blessed assurance of God's love for me. And perhaps you know it, perhaps you don't, perhaps you're um, a long Christian, but you're not walking in the fullness, you're not walking in the power. Peter gives us direction on how to be uh, leaders um, in the faith, being the leader of the twelve disciples, Jesus being the head. Uh, I, I find one point in here uh, particularly interesting, um, a point where Peter talks about Paul in verse 15, an account that the long-suffering our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul also, according to the wisdom given unto him that hath written unto you. I find it fascinating that Peter is able to call Paul ooh, a beloved brother. Ooh. Is this a good point that I'm making? <laughs> uh, the alarms, the signs, pay attention to the omens, right? Um, 
brotherly kindness and just, you know, can you imagine the suspicion? Do you, if, if you know anything about the story of Jesus in the, in the, in the, if you study the Bible at all, Paul was, uh, was not always Paul. He was Saul and he was a persecutor of Christians. And then before he became Paul, he was killing Christians gladly. But here is Peter, the leader of the disciples, right? The rock of the church calling Paul a beloved brother. This is the power of forgiveness. This is only available through Jesus Christ. No other bridge can be crossed. No other boundary line can be crossed. Uh, like the boundaries, well, complete healing can be found only in Jesus. Um, uncrossable boundaries can be crossed through forgiveness. And that is uh, one of the core themes of Jesus' message and the uh, Bible in general is forgiveness sets you free. So having said all that, let's get into the book of 2 Peter chapter 3 verse 1. <clears throat> this second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you, in both which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance. Because we do need to be reminded. Because it's like we get amnesia sometimes. That's why I have this project that I'm working on called A Minister's Notes, which is many years of notes um, following the Lord for your benefit. Because it's like we get amnesia sometimes. It's like we get, it's just we forget the blessed assurance. We forget our blessed hope. So we need to constantly be reminded. That's why it's so important to be in remembrance and to be reminded and to hear the word and to take communion and to remind yourself that you believe. Verse 2, that ye may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets and of the commandment of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Verse 3, knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lusts and saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. They're mocking the Lord. God will not be mocked. Vengeance will be the Lord's. Vengeance will be mine, saith the Lord. There will be a day. And we are going to... It talks about the vengeance which the Lord has taken when he flooded the earth. And the vengeance to come, which will be the fire that consumes everything. Have you read the book of Revelation? It talks about it. Um, verse 5. For this they willingly are ignorant of that by the word of God the heavens were of old and the earth standing out of the water and in the water, whereby the world that was then being overflowed with water perished. I find it fascinating how many times Peter talks about the Old Testament and uh, he, he references Noah and how that was on his mind. You know, I, I think about the things that I want to talk about and I suppose there are things on my mind and it just is fascinating that it seems the Old Testament was on Peter's mind. The old stories, the old ways were on Peter's mind. I mean, he's talking in writing about them, so he considers them important. Come into remembrance. There's a verse in Jeremiah which says, Stand ye in the ways and see, and ask for the old paths, and ye shall find rest for your souls. And then it has a comma, and it says, But they would not. You see, there is a will that needs to be given over. You need to willingly come. You need to willingly bring yourself into submission. Willingly bring yourself into sub submission. Uh, remembrance. Repentance. Willingly. Right? Verse 7. But the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word, are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. The book of Revelation states clearly that in one hour all of it will burn. The great city will burn. The book of Revelation is very metaphorical, but it does say that an all-consuming fire is our Lord in Hebrews, I think. Somewhere it says our God is an all-consuming fire. All of the impurities will be burned away, and all that's left will be pure and holy and perfect. Verse number uh, 8. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years are as one day. Hmm. 
So fascinating, isn't it? How old is the Earth? You know, how old is humanity? Is it a hundred million or is it only a couple thousand? What do you believe? There's some believe that the Earth's only a couple of thousand days old, so... Or years, rather, so does that mean it's only a couple of days old to God? What is 75 years? What is a hundred years if, if one, if a thousand years is one day? So what is one man's life? 10 men's lifetimes is, is, is as one day, you know, if each man lived to be a hundred. I mean, time is, is where men exist. Time is where we exist. God is beyond time. He is beyond is or is not. He is, he simply is is God, he, uh, the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Do you understand who you are and who God is? Have you humbled yourself before the Lord and cast away your pride? Verse number nine. The Lord is not slack concerning his promises, some men count slackness, but is long suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Uh, the NIV version says the Lord is not slow considering uh, as, as we humans consider slowness, but instead he is patient with us in order that we may come into repentance. Hmm. I've heard it said that God is not as much primarily concerned with answering our pray prayers. Not that he isn't. He wants to answer our prayers, but... He isn't as concerned with answering our prayers as with developing the uh, characteristic of endurance within us. But not only developing endurance, but to be able to endure with a joyful heart, to rejoice in all of it, through it all, rejoice in all circumstances. So to be able to endure, endure all things with rejoicing, I think is really what God wants for his people. The good, the bad, and the ugly. And we are able to do this with Jesus in us. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Because Christ is in, in you, in your heart, therefore you have hope of glory. And heaven. And perfection. Anyway. Uh, verse 10. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, and which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise. And the elements shall melt with a fervent heat, and the earth and the works that are therein shall be burned up. If the master of the house had known which hour the thief would have come, he would have battened down his hatches and prepared for the thief to come. But the master of the house did not know when the thief came, and so all of his goods were taken. We do not know when the second coming is. The second coming will be like a thief in the night, when we, at an hour and a time that we do not know. Are you prayed up? Are you ready? It will come in the twinkling of an eye and will be just like that. Do you know where you will spend eternity? On the other side of death, do you know where your eternal destiny is? It's one of two places, heaven or hell. Which one are you going to? Continuing on. Verse 11, seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved. What manner of persons ought you to be in holy conversation and godliness? Looking for and hastening unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved and the elements shall be melted with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we according to his promise look for new heaven and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. Hmm. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, be diligent that ye may be found of him in peace without spot and blameless. And account to that the long suffering of the Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul, also according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you. Suffering is for our good. Read uh, Isaiah 48 and 49, and you will find out that just like silver is tried in the furnace of fire and is refined through the flame of fire, uh, our furnace, we are refined as well. And our furnace is the uh, furnace of affliction. It is suffering which refines us and purifies us and makes us purified. That's what the Bible says. It's a divine mystery, and it's crazy, but it it, it just is. It's the way. Uh, and Jesus suffered, so who are we not to suffer? 
Um, verse 16, and also in all his epistles speaking in them of these things, which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest, as they do also the other scriptures and their own destruction. Ye therefore, beloved, seeing ye know these things uh, before, beware lest ye also, being led away with your error of the wicked, fall from your own steadfastness. But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be both glory now and forever. Amen. Mm -hmm. uh, that ye may be found in him, uh, peace, without spot, blameless. Not being led to error of the wicked or falling from your own steadfastness, but growing in grace. Yes, aren't we all? Isn't that what we're all doing? Just simply growing in grace. And Lord, may you, may you please, uh, all, all those that are hearing the sound of my voice, may, may you uh, bless them with uh, blessing and refreshing and change by your Holy Spirit and more grace, Lord, in their lives, Lord, for we all need more grace. Help us to understand the wisdom of more grace, Lord. And thank you for the word. I thank you for the man that was Peter, Cephas, the rock of the church that followed you so mightily back then. Thank you for the encouragement that he uh, instills in us today in this age that we are living in. It is applicable for our time. The Bible is a book for the common man in order to wage war uh, against the enemy. Um, it is so simple a child can understand it and yet the deeper you go into it the deeper it gets god our god is an awesome god he reigns from heaven above with wisdom power and love our god is an awesome god he left heavenly perfection and he came and dwelt in the form of a man and his name is jesus um he uh bled and died to buy my pardon and an empty grave is there to prove that the Savior lives. And because he lives, we can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because he lives, we know that there is a future of heavenly perfection. And life is worth the living because he lives. I pray you all, you all have been edified. I love you all. I, I wrap this all in the mighty perfect name of Jesus. And I will see you guys on the next one. Until then.